What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Backliners podcast, Agro and Barracuda, coming back at you. It's good to be back. Uh, appreciate all the patience, of course, as we work to get back in the podcast. And we're kicking it off with our... I had a whole bit planned, okay? Where oh, I was, was going to have a hoodie on, all right? I was going to have a hoodie on. I was going to be like, oh, Barra, it's getting a little warm in here. And then I was going to take it off, and it was going to reveal the sponsor. But Barra showed up wearing his shirt, <laughs> and he didn't have a hoodie. So now I don't have a choice. The, this I'm is just how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna wear a hoodie in June, my God. I wore a dope jacket on broadcast today, and it didn't stop me. Well, it's kind of cold in the studio. It's kind of cold in my in my room, to be honest with you. And so I, I kind of miss the hoodie. But for those of you who aren't watching, of course, uh, we've been talking about a new sponsor and all that kind of exciting stuff, and we are super excited to announce that Manscaped is the sponsor of the Backliners. Let me tell you a little something, chat. Okay, so here's the deal. Here, let, let's let's talk a little bit about how this sort of stuff goes. Normally, they go, hey, uh, you know, the, the prediction guys come to us, hey, we got a sponsor, all that kind of stuff. Uh, here's what you want to do, and here's what you're going to say. And we go, cool, thanks. But let me tell you something, okay? I tried out the Manscaped product. Of course, we're talking about the, the, the top of the line lawnmower 4.0 that I've got my hands on right here. And it was an absolute treat. To quote Barracuda, it was an enjoyable experience. Is that right? Am I misrepresenting your stance here, Barry? Yeah, I mean, you can shave basically anything you want on your body. Any anything you want. Any nooks and crannies you want to get into, you anything can get into you them. Listen, and... Barry, I know you're in a weird spot here potentially because your parents listen to the podcast, but mine Thank don't. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> I'm, so you just chime in wherever you want, baby, because I'm going to go in on this, okay? Look, Thank you. I appreciate I'm it. not kidding. This thing is actually OP. I felt, I felt like I was in complete control and totally safe the whole time. I got to do a little ad read here. So support for the backliners is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. The Manscaped offers precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0. Ta-da. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with its exclusive offer for you. And this is true, chat. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code BACK at manscaped.com. So let me tell you a quick story um, about why you guys should get the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. We're going to get to playoffs and all that kind of stuff in just a minute. Um, but this is important for us, okay? Let me tell you a little story about why you should get it. And I'm not trolling when I say this, okay? Back in college... I was getting prepared to go to uh, a, a college party uh, a, a, across the way. And I figured, you know, going out, having a good time, I should get prepared. You know, I should clean up a little bit. So I go to shave where I need to be shaved. All right. I got myself pretty good before I went to this party. Like, I went through a lot of toilet paper cleaning up some blood before I went to this party. I was not feeling good heading over there, all right? It was not a good scene. And look, I think it was like, I, I, I can't remember if it was freshman or sophomore year, but I was really excited to go. And the whole time I was there, I'm like, I'm like standing on a leg really weird because I, I had nicked myself so bad that it hurt. And I could feel that I was, like, probably still bleeding the entire time. I was traumatized. It was horrendous. I went, oh, and this is a true part of the story. I did not win any beer pong all night. And I am nuts at beer pong. I was off my game. With the, If I had the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 at this point, I would have been owning at beer pong. I would have had way more friends in college because I wouldn't have absolutely destroyed my cojones right beforehand. So that's Dude, why you guys need it. Barry? Your genitals were just bleeding the whole time at a college party? Uh, there was a li upon inspection when I got home, there was a little bit of, uh, a oh little bit of blood. God. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> what part is so making you nauseous? <laughs> story, you know, it just. It's a true story. It happened to me. I lived the experience. Let me tell you. That never would have happened you, with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. So you went into that knowing that you were going to, you know, eventually that night get into a predicament where you needed to show off your goods. Um, 
No, I mean, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think so. But it's like, uh, it's like Tyler, my producer, always says, like, look good, feel good. You know, like I was, oh. I was trying to, you know, you, you get, you get all groomed up, head to toe. Uh-huh. You get the haircut, you're feeling good. You get the haircut, you're feeling good. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> all the hairs, like, you get them, get it all out there. You know what I mean? Like that's how it's got to be. I would really uh-huh. could have used it. Uh, look, all, all joking aside and all like that kind of stuff, this is uh, definitely a big first step for us on the mm-hmm. Backliners podcast. The best way that you could possibly support Barra and I and, and, and this podcast is by going over to manscaped.com and using code back. They're definitely looking at, at how many sales we get and that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm and I, not kidding. It is, it is a really, really good product. Yeah. Just mom and dad plug yours real quick. It'd be much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> I've been using it since the OG uh, lawnmower, and I have loved it the whole time. Yeah. Like, it feels great, and it doesn't. It's really, 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 really hard to nick yourself with this. I'm like, not even sure. Really I, could, be, dude. I don't even yeah, think you I could, because it's got this little. You can't really see it uh, here, and it's in the bathroom right now. But the, see yeah. this like little white thing? That's <laughs> oh, the that's the, the manscaped like trademark technology right there. Mm-hmm. It's like a hard plastic blade cover. And yep. it doesn't interfere with how close you're getting with the shave, but I was never in any fear. I felt yep. fearless. It is the ultimate protection for all of your goods. All Again, right, Mom and Dad, you're good. <clears throat> all right, yeah, you can unplug now. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Manscaped.com, promo code BACK, 20% off, and free worldwide shipping. I'm sure we'll talk about it later on in the podcast as well. Thanks. Huge thanks to Manscaped, of course, for, uh, for partnering with the podcast. It's going to be really good. Oh, my wife brought it to me. Thank you. Uh, it is... It, it, okay, no, I'm not even going to go there. He, so you got this little, like, white plastic piece right here. It's, it, and a flashlight. And a fl- Oh, yeah, and a flashlight. Yep. And it, you know, the flashlight I thought was kind of troll. It, kinda, it was kind of nice. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's kind of nice. Right. You're, like, you're like, why is there a flashlight on this thing? And then you go to use it, and you're like, that's why there's a flashlight. Yeah, this. that's why. I thought they were yeah. trolling, but you know what? The fellas over at Manscaped, they're, they're experts. You can tell. That's you not know. a bad idea, actually. <laughs> that's not a bad idea, indeed. All right, so let's let's move on. It's time to talk about some Smite. Had the Phase okay. 1 playoffs this weekend. Oh, and uh, I got a lot of tweets about it. I will be watching the Hawks game on the other monitor, so apologies if I just completely ignore Barracuda. Uh, we're currently up 7-6. So, it. so the game is over. Um mm-hmm. Phase one playoffs. Let's talk about the event. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna ask like, what all did you want to cover in this podcast? Yeah, that's a good question. Because um, it's been like three weeks or so. Do you want to cover like just playoffs in this episode? Do you want to hmm. go like back in time and come forward? Dude, or... I don't remember. I don't remember what. Uh, that's fair. That's what fair. happened at the end of uh, at the groups? I mean, you guys. I guess we could talk kind of about like your team because you'll remember, mm-hmm. maybe, um, coming into a playoffs. Bit. But, or, I guess, yeah, like, the group stages and that kind of stuff, like, you guys were kind of red hot talking yep. about the gr- about the group stage. What do you think uh, started going right for you guys at that point? Um, as far as the group stage goes, I mean, Valkyries were in our group. Obviously, like, we kind of knew that's a guaranteed win. Unluckily, due to ping diff, which hopefully gets sorted out by the end of this season or year or whatever. Um, so we kind of knew that was a free dub. Uh, Titans haven't really looked that great. They've been scrappy, yeah. but they haven't really looked like they have like their cohesive answer for how they want to play the game. Um, and then Leviathans, as oh, what was that? Sorry, my Discord popped up. Um, yeah. as as uh the phase has gone on, as season or this like season's gone on, we've kind of just got more and more confident against the Leviathans because we kind of really broke down how they want to play the game and what they want to do on the map. And I think there's a lot of their strategy, which is flawed. And I think that uh, me and Hanax basically know exactly what to do against Leviathans to beat them. Mm. So we, in that group, we were, we kind of got like best case scenario for us. Um, Cause Scarabs are really coin flippy. Like they come out super hot sometimes or super cold. Right. So they don't want to play them in groups. Uh, Warriors kind of the same thing. Um, and then Kings and Dragons, obviously, are two really good teams. So we're really satisfied with the overall group that we got. <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, I mean, we'll talk more about you guys versus Leviathan specifically in a little bit, I suppose. Mm. But talking about the other group a little bit, I mean, obviously a little bit of controversy is too strong of a word. Um, but, you know, the situation with the Kings not making it into the playoffs, from my perspective, 
first of all, uh, obviously, like, the situation that we were in and how it, the, the phase needed to wrap up and that kind of stuff. Um, I think that people were a little too, like, seeing the phrase, High Red should have come up with a better emergency format is just, like, that's a really stupid thing to say. So stupid. Such so a stupid, stupid thing bro. to say. And that's all I've got to say a, about that. You're just an angry fan at that point if the every other top team made it into groups and yours didn't. Yeah, exactly. Just I mean, a stupid that's thing a to fan. Say. Yep. Yeah. Um, that being said, I thought the group stages were awesome. I thought it was a great mm-hmm. format. And Agreed. I was really excited to do it. Um, as for that group, you know, the Kings came into that group. Realistically, I mean, the Scarabs... And the Warriors, those are the 6th and 7th place teams um, coming in. And the Kings lost. uh, They lost to both. No, they beat the Warriors, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, they they Hmm. beat the Warriors. Come on, I can actually look because I've got it it up right in front of me. Um, Yeah, the Kings lost there. They did beat the Warriors 2-1. And you just have, then you're in a position where you're winning in because the Warriors played up. And played better yep. than people thought they would up against the Dragons. And that's what it's about. Like, having, you know, when there's a little bit more on the line, having your big players come up and make big plays and your team kind of coalescing and coming together. And as, as unfortunate it is for the Kings, who obviously are a great team, and I would have loved to see them at the playoffs, they didn't earn their spot. And that's yep. and that's what it's about to me. You know, you gotta. I think that you got to give a lot of credit to the Warriors for, for playing their best smite, because Lord knows they played very little good smite during phase one they finally did a little bit at the group stages and it was really fun to watch and then the kings had had, they i mean they they lost against the solar scarabs i'm not going to use the word choke because i think that that's probably a little bit too harsh but they're certainly the favorites going into that set and they lost so they don't deserve to go yeah they just made so many bad plays and yeah. I think they can literally only blame themselves. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think they did because I think, I think Harry made a tweet afterwards. I was like me giving away wins, and it was just like, like just something doing this, like yeah. just giving away wins because he kept like trolling or was like out of position in late game. I mean, it could have been like a respect thing, like, like I just don't respect these players. I won't like play perfect position. Oh no, we're losing. Oh no, they got fire. Oh, right. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Right. Um, but I mean. That that group was way more coin flippy than I thought it would. Because I thought dragons and kings were 100%. Then I was like scarabs or warriors, like 50-50 going back and forth. I literally did not expect warriors to ever make it in the semis. Me neither. I... <laughs> and here's like, what I don't understand. Here's what I don't understand. They did it, and they played so well in groups. And then in the playoffs, the warriors looked just like they did during phase one. They yeah. did all the same stuff. Yeah, I was like, what? I was so like, confused. Like, Vote literally didn't get a chance to load into that game. He like, sure did not. Ev- every ADC against Dragons, the whole playoffs, just literally just sat in their top. They <laughs> had included. to. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was just like, okay, Sam or PBM are here again. Okay, I don't want to step up and get rocketed by Dan's. Okay, I'll sit in my tower. Like, I'm pretty sure our game plan was really good into it. We just didn't execute. Sorry, we'll go back in order. We'll yeah, back. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we'll go over the final set, of course, in a little bit. Uh, overall, zero problems with uh, with the group stage in general. Zero problems with yep. the Kings not making it. Got to give credit to the Solar Scarabs, who then go up against the Leviathans and just didn't... I don't know if, the, if they were nervous because, you know, a couple SPL rookies. The, I mean, but those guys have won console world championships so we know that they're capable of playing well in big moments that you know they don't always those don't necessarily automatically get the better of them but Mm -hmm. certainly not a particularly good showing from the scarabs that day but not to take anything away from the leviathans i thought they played pretty well in that set yeah we didn't get to learn anything from that set yeah they did exactly what we thought they would (laughs) at that point they just they just kept playing Leviathan Smite, which is uh, yep. good until it isn't. Um, and then the Jade Dragons versus Tartarus Titan set. That set was really fun, um, mm-hmm. really back and forth, but kind of still feel like, and this has been the story for, for Mike and Panda teams for a long time now, I don't feel like they get beat that often. I feel like they lose 
more that mm-hmm. they get beat more often than not. Do you think that's fair? Mm, I, I would say it's like 50 50 mm. uh, down the line. I think this year, especially, I think they've been playing bad. Yeah. Like, they've been making a lot more mistakes than they have in the previous years and giving teams a lot more windows than previous years. I mean, it might just be like, from my perspective, playing against them. But before, it literally felt like I was helpless and all our buffs were going to get invaded and we literally can't do anything on the map. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, we're getting to 12, 15 minutes and it's a tied game. Sure. And it feels way more, we can make a play and win this game now than, okay, it's, we literally loaded in the game we lost. Like, right. I mean, could it be just like a team diff thing that I'm just like on a better team than I used to be, but yes. Um, they definitely seem way more human now than before for me. I mean, I do think they have, like, bad days and beat themselves, don't get me wrong, but I do think they're playing... I mean, they just won playoffs, obviously. They're still a very good team. Sure. But, yeah, I think they're definitely more human than they used to be. Fair enough. I think in that set, I felt like they were making more mistakes than yeah. than the Titans making sick plays. But the, Not to take anything away from the Titans, because I do think that they played pretty well... Um, overall but it did feel like the the ball was in their court um Mm -hmm. basically in all five games of that set but eventually we're able to to pull it out in that game five which brings us then of course to those semifinals with the bolts and the leviathans for you guys uh game one what 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 happened in that game because you guys lost game one won the next Um, three what happened game one we picked sobek and we did Sobek Neath Soul, which obviously was like a pressure draft. We wanted to get on the board early. But the Faf Sunder stopped a lot of our pressure that we wanted to do. And we wanted to obviously fight out their buffs. But we felt like we couldn't do that. And then I think we also got a little too excited on the first gold play, I think. That was that set. I think we pulled a gold tree way too early. I like 2,000 gold. But we were a little too confident in the play in itself. Um, so we got punished there and then kind of lost the game off of that because we just got behind with the comp that really shouldn't get behind. We also didn't get to utilize Neathholtz at all in that game one. Um, and then from there, I think we just went away with those, went away from those comps, which is kind of unlucky. I think that left too much of a bad taste in our mouth. I'm pretty sure those style of comps are still good. Mm-hmm. Um, just the rest of the playoffs, we didn't want to go back to those style of comps. Um, just because we were like, I don't know, we just got so like morally defeated off of that one game that we didn't want to touch it. Um, but I think those comps are still good, obviously. Yeah, what um talking back about your your matchup versus the Leviathans, I mean, you guys are now undefeated against them in playoff mm-hmm. events, winning four sets in a row against them in the in the most important settings. Uh, why do you think you guys dominate them so hard when it comes to this time of year? Uh. I think it's just their playbook is so one-dimensional. Uh, and, like, regular season games are a lot more scrappy and more uh, just random than playoff games. Like, everyone in playoff games are playing kind of 100%, but during the regular season, I don't know, we just play a little bit more loose, I would get, I would say, against them and against every other team. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it's just more limit testing or whatever. Um but I think at playoffs, everyone's like 100% focused. And I, like I said, I think their playbook is just very simple. And they don't really divert away from their one style. Which, I mean, they did the they did that all last year, right? They yeah. did the one style all last year. Their god pulls are very slim. And they just played one style. And if that style doesn't work... Like, at playoffs, literally everyone's drafting 100% focused to beat the one team they're playing against, whereas during the regular season, I feel like teams are just more distracted or whatever. Right. Um, but I just think Leviathans need to just diversify a bit more if they want to be good when it matters. Yeah, I was gonna. That, that's kind of what I was going to ask. Like, that's what, you know, whenever I'm asked on the desk, like, what's the Leviathan's problem? I'm saying the same things. But as a player, like, how do you just become less one-dimensional? How does that happen? I think you just work on it in scrims. I think you just have more ideas brought to the table and more play styles brought to the table than, like, than what they're doing. Like, yeah. they're all really, really good players. But, I mean, when Lask gets a lead like he did in those games 
And then Pantom can't gank lanes. Like, well, where is Pantom supposed to get any farm from? Yeah. He's not allowed to farm. Like, right. His, his farm is kills. Or are kills. And if we take that away, or if any team takes that away, then he's literally going to be level 8 forever. Yeah. I just feel like, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think the Leviathan should be willing to lose more. Because um, I feel like yeah. not changing your picks is a product of wanting to win all the time. And mm -hmm. that is obviously like everyone wants to win all the time, but I feel like it's almost, it should be less important for Leviathans to get a good seed at worlds because if they keep doing what they're doing, it, that seed almost certainly won't matter. Right. Yeah. I think it's almost more productive for the, for the Leviathans to not throw sets. That's not what I'm saying, but like, take some risks, you know, try something new. And it, I, I assume they do that in scrims. I don't know if they do. Maybe they're just playing, the, you know, maybe they're playing Merlin Chiron all day in scrims as well. But you, you've got to just, Hey, I kind of feel like, you know, maybe Agni looks good here, or maybe I feel like maybe Gibalanke works in this draft and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You get to, just throw it at the wall and see what sticks and don't worry so much about the record. Worry about adding new wrinkles and new play styles into the team, which will make you lose in the short term, but would put them in a better spot come world's time. Yep. I mean, that's really what we did this year with Emoja. Like we literally just let Jake continually practice Emoja. And now he's actually a really, really good Emoja player. I mean, yep. those scrims we're a learning process for literally all of us, but like now he's actually an insanely good Emoja and we can pick it whenever we want now. Yeah. And like, if you asked me last year, if Jake was going to be a good Emoja, I would have been like, no, there's <laughs> no way, like no shot. Like that's just I can not confirm his style. After every podcast last year, I'd be like, so Barry, uh, can Jake play Emoja yet? And he was like, nope, not really. Nope. Like, <laughs> we yeah. lost three scrims out of this week, but still no. <laughs> but, we, and, and I yeah. kept saying on the desk, if last year especially when Yamoja was mega oh, broken. So broken like if you can't play Yamoja, you can't be very good like it's it's pretty binary if you can't play the best god in your role you're not going to be able to be the best player in your role mm -hmm. and jake to his credit worked at it and won yep. i think he won you game three of this of today's finals with his yep. emoja play i agree like I think also last year we didn't really have the greatest learning environment because we were trying to like when everything's like struggling, you're trying to just scrap for wins and right. it's like a very unhealthy learning, I guess like mentality or whatever. Cause you just want to get wins. Cause you're like scrapping for any kind of forward momentum you can get. So like practicing other gods is really difficult. Um, but this year, because we already have such a strong foundation, I think everyone practicing different picks is way easier now than it used to be. Yeah. Um, Eddie Bebe in the chat asks, why is it detrimental that Leviathans play the same gods, even when they're top tier gods, they play what's meta. Why is that so easy to plan against? And why isn't it effective? I'll do a short thing and Barry, you can weigh in. In my mind, look at, look at what the dragons did, uh, in, in this, this playoff event where they're forcing teams to pick and ban around gods like soul and mercury that no other mm -hmm. team is playing and it puts you on the spot for coming up with a plan on short notice. Whereas if you get days or in, in a lot of t cases, like you could have prepped for the Leviathans at the, at the end of phase one mm -hmm. and known exactly what they were going to pick, uh, come playoff time. And if you give teams that much time to come up with a game plan, then it's really easy. And that's before we even go into in game stuff on like, Hey, we're not used to playing against, mercury plus girdle plus fafnir and we don't know that we've got eight less seconds to check fire in comparison to normal yep. and like mental timers mercury gank paths are like a huge deal i mean how many people just got dumpstered by sam's lane ganks before they realized they have to sit behind tower or sit behind their wall like think, yeah, I still died. well yeah you still died but event, you know they just waited until they had enough damage that it didn't matter that you were under tower but like how many people were hit, getting hit by it at level five it, yep. it, it took like three sets before anyone started playing against it properly so it, you know as much credit as as the players get and as much as they deserve for like knowing everything and knowing all this little stuff if you don't haven't played against something for six months you're probably gonna 
make a mistake playing around it, even if it isn't the meta. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. Meta gods aren't meta gods aren't the best gods. They're the gods that are being played. And you can always find something that's a little bit better. Or different. And and every time you go into a playoff event or a major event anyways, you should be planning and practicing what will beat the meta. Right. Because everyone wants to have their own strategy going in and everyone's trying to hide things the week going up into playoffs so like have like in game one for example today we had no idea that that circuit was going to go support yep literally no idea like once they locked in the mercury i was like oh <laughs> that's unlucky right there like <laughs> i was just like oh like that's because obviously they're picking it to take it away from last and then it's gonna go jungle yep and then it's like fifth fourth or fifth pig they locked in Merc, and i was like oh I guess I'll be in my tower this entire game. All right, here we go. Yep. And that's just, like, something Leviathans would never do. Like, they would never give you the question mark in draft or the question mark of a flex pick. Um, it's just not their style. Like they And also, like, their picks and bans are very easy to read, and their play style of how they want to play the map is also very easy to read. And they don't really do anything random. I mean, I, I always look at them like Cog Prime. Like, yeah. we were very good at meta picks, very good at the standard, but people always knew what we were going to pick and how we were going to play the map. Yep. And you just don't... I say it a lot, like, in Season 8, you don't get to show up and just outsmite game people very often. Like, yep. that's not how it works anymore. You guys, back in the day, you were just pressing your buttons better than yep. the people you were playing against. Like, that just doesn't happen anymore. Everyone's too good at pressing buttons. Do you remember... I was thinking about this the other day. Do you remember when it was just acceptable for supports to be bad mechanically? Yeah. What, what was that, that about? Was, Who was okay that was with a, that? That was a well-known thing that your support player would just blink and miss his so I pluck into five people. <laughs> and Every you'd be like, that's how it goes. That. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I guess he did. That's unlucky. <laughs> you tried it's, your best, little guy. Like, why were, like, why were people okay with that? It's actually crazy. Also, why were we okay with only having three items at, like, 25 minutes? Bro, it is nuts. Like, walking, watching those games back, like, it's... Do you remember the whole, well, if you rush Warlock Staff and you get it done by yeah. 12 minutes, that's a good benchmark. Like, casters would love that 12-minute yep. benchmark that people would talk about. Now, if it's 12 minutes and you're not working on your third item, you've, like, inted the game away. Yep. Like, it is, it is crazy. I don't know. They had a hundred stacks back then, right? Hundred stacks, yes, sir. Good lord, what an item! Hundred stacks, dude. I uh, never mind. Okay, we, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, all right, let's talk. Uh, wait, do I? Oh, do we even have to touch on the J Dragons Oni Warrior semifinals? Like, do we have to? Yeah, Warriors just played like you said earlier. Warriors played like they did all season instead of how they played in groups. And they just like I feel like they made. No adjustment in picks and bans. <laughs> like, when we were watching the set, I was like, okay, they're just fighting into dragons and the 2v2 in duo. Okay, they're losing the 2v2. Okay, they're fighting the 4v4 with their buffs after they lost the 2v2. We're already behind. Okay, we're now we're losing all of our buffs and now we're dying. Oh, it's going to happen in the next two games? Like, like man, what? I just, I just don't... I just don't get it. I just don't... Like, they just kept going, alright, give me Chiron into this Danza Burrow. Like... Give me that. Uh, We're in the Merc. Yeah. Like, I'm in. Like, I think... Okay, I think the Chiron pick is fine. As an ADC player, I think the Chiron pick is fine. I was going to ask it's you not... about it. Yeah, I knew I knew we were going to get there. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's fine because you have enough, like, stealth peel in your laning phase is decent enough. You just have to play it literally like a beta and literally just sit in your tower the entire time. And then in team fights, you just shoot the ult down the team fight obviously and try to hit their carries and i think chiron and ult into dan's and team fights is very good because you can hit him pretty easily yeah. um but yeah uh they just weren't adjusting their play but they were just picking like top meta picks and i don't know and also i think darda's like i don't know if the ping is like gotten into his head but he i feel bad for him i just feel like Me he's just not having anywhere close to the influence slash like performance that he had last year and like he tweets like really sad stuff so i don't know if he's like getting in his own head about it but i mean that guy is a sick player like on yep. land disgustingly good player yep um so i think we don't actually know how good warriors is right now 
I think whenever they do all come to Georgia slash LAN or whatever, they just need to do a nice little solid mental reset, which shouldn't be a problem if you have Neil on the team. Um, obviously, Mental Warrior. Um, <laughs> that was kind of funny. Nicely done. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I just think they need a mental reset. And because, like, I think uh, someone tweeted about like having your whole mid 3v3 on ping changes the way you draft and the way you play. And Definitely. It just looked like a frustrated set for me for Warriors. They just weren't adjusting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just, and, and those are the things like, yeah, it affects your drafts, but I feel like they still could have drafted better. That like, yeah, obviously, okay, you can say that literally every time. Let me put it. Let me put it in a much more toxic way. They could have done anything in the drafts, and yeah, it doesn't prevent you from adjusting at all. Would be the way I would think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Definitely, uh, because the Warriors like. I want, I don't know, that's a, t- a team with so much talent, I want them to be good, but they just haven't been quite yet. Uh, I love the, um, the like, Nika, like, the tweets that Nika gets afterwards, where it's, like, LeBron on the Cavaliers when, like, the Cavs are really bad. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, Nika really has been LeBron on the Cavs recently, because he's been playing sick still. Yep. He's Unlucky. been playing very confidently, he's been winning a lot of his laning phases, and his rotations have been really good. Yep. But, I mean, he's just, his back has to just be breaking. Yeah. No offense to the rest of the team, obviously, but like. No, I mean, I don't I think. Sh- I just feel bad for Nika. They think they're playing particularly sick, I would imagine. Um, also, all right. I, go ahead. Real quick, I think the Loki auto ban or whatever affected them a lot. I think Loki was one of like Kivo's best picks. Yep. And it's also pretty easy to play on high ping, and I think that auto ban has affected them a lot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hoping that that gets resolved sooner rather than later, because Kivo and Johnny could uh, could really use it for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Barry. Before we get on to the finals. Maybe we should yes, do a little sponsor shout out once again for, of course, sure. the 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 main support sponsor for the backliners, which is of course Manscaped. The support for the backliners is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. They're the champions in this space. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. You know what I was going to say. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code BACK, B-A-C-K, at manscaped.com. Again, this is literally the best way you could support the show is by going to manscaped.com and using code BACK. And you get 20% off and free worldwide shipping. So it's a win-win for for all the fellas involved. Um, All right, so let's let's talk about the finals then. Mm Mm-hmm. Going in, I phase one or game one. Uh, let's see if my memory is good enough to. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old. I don't know it's be, if it's because, uh, it's you know it just like the the circumstance or whatever. But I'm just having like I used to be so good. I used to be able to remember everything about every game, and I feel yeah, like the same way. I can, I just can't do it anymore. I like I, mean, I just can't remember everything. I don't know if it's because I've casted too many games at this point. Like I hit my. I'm I'm at my memory limit on games casted, but I, I don't know. I just can't remember it all. They just gotta go back in there and just start deleting some stuff. Yeah, I honestly don't remember the games today either. I mean, I think then this we, is gonna be good podcast content. Did we win game one? Did we, we, we lost, game, lost one. game one. Oh, wait, the fire giant steal. Yeah, the fire yeah. giant steal. That's right. Ooh, the fire ooh. giant steal. Oh, real real quick, yep. uh, I want to say, Classy mm-hmm. Dave in one in chat says lawnmower 4.0 not available in EU. That is very sad for you, Classy Dave, because the lawnmower 4.0 is an incredible piece of technology. But it doesn't. You don't have to be getting the lawnmower 4.0. You can get something like the. Uh, anti-chafing oh, no. ball deodorant oh. that i have here they sent this to me i'm gonna be honest i haven't used this yet but i'm sure it's fantastic or they've got some manscaped boxers that i forgot to show off earlier that those oh i'm glad you have those because those are okay not even gonna say this because we're sponsored or anything but those are literally the softest boxers they feel i have soft. ever put on my like should i go off camera and put them ever. on should i go off camera and put them on right now i'm not gonna oh, yeah if you want to oh, i'm not okay. gonna do that no that's um, that's not happening for sure but they do feel very soft so again you don't have to be getting the lawnmower 4.0 we highly recommend it but any of the great manscaped products you can use promo code back and get 20 percent off oh, yeah. and free shipping <laughs> maybe you show it off on stream maybe <laughs> yeah you guys wish i don't manscape's not paying us enough for that to happen for me to get for me to get prediction twitch banned 
I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's the play for us. I mean, maybe just far near your microphone will be. <laughs> well, apparently that's where that we draw the line. I don't know. Yep. I guess that's yep. the line in the sand we got to go over. Um, all right. So yeah, game one they go Sirket support. For what it's mm-hmm. worth, I was kind of losing it on cast uh, about how smart I thought the Sirket support pick was in general, but the way Mike built and played it that he doesn't go blink and he just builds upgraded horrific and is just ready to mm-hmm. sit on his back line. And his whole plan was just to not let Lazra play the game yeah. at all. Like he wasn't going to initiate. And that's where I think they got in trouble is that Mike started trying to be the ones to start fights and dive as Sir Ket normally does. And most of the time you guys just like one tapped him off those. Yep. He even built Lonos, and I feel like he still wasn't even, like, that tanky. I know, I felt like he was again, still which... insta-dying. Yeah, I was kind of, I was auto-tagging him for, like, 190 or something, plus uh, Kins or whatever, and, yeah, I don't know, we, I think we win that game very easily if we get that fire. Yeah. Like, I think their team comp from behind, like, even from even, I think we should still be, like, dominating that game, which I think we were, and then, like, just... Coin flip, unlucky, fire, steal. Like, lately, I was the one that called to commit that, and I told Vin to turn around and secure it. Um, but literally, every single time we've done that play lately, like, the one person can get in, and we can all secure it, like, X amount. Um, we always got in the fire. Like, it's just super... I mean, I hate to be that guy, but it's just super no, unlucky that it unlucky. happens. I will say... At playoffs, yeah. I will say... Uh, and, I, and I'm not throwing uh, I'm not throwing this player under the bus, but I'll say what I said on cast. But Jake probably should have frenzied you guys during that fight because it was you up. Frenzy? It was up the whole time. Yep. Probably could have used that one. <laughs> For the podcast listeners, uh, Barra is uh, slack jawed at the moment. He he'll be back. Just a quick Microsoft restart sound for Barra, and he'll. <laughs> And he'll be back up. Oh, no. We've lost him, ladies and gentlemen. He is laying down. (laughs) (laughs) Why did you have to tell me, dog? I could have gone the rest of my night. Yeah. You would have washed it back eventually. It wasn't upgraded. That's a conversation about maybe it. I mean, it should have been by that point. Uh, Maybe. Cammy just right. Maybe it came up right afterwards. But I looked directly after it got stolen. And it was up. So maybe it wasn't. We'll but just I'm, say it was down. We'll just say it was down. It was down. Yeah, for Barra's yeah, for Barra's mental health, it was down. Oh no, dude! I really got him, Chad. I yeah, thought he knew. No. I thought no. he knew. That's oh. so sad. Like, okay, I actually watched it back in like 0.25 speed, and literally we had like the Merlin Ice one was like a millimeter away from it, and my two came in and hit. The hit uh, fire at the same time as like my auto attack did, and then the Mer- the Merc one was like right before the Merlin one, like actually wild steal. Very unlucky. I, I, I think I'm always calling that play like hundred percent. Like, I don't think you're wrong to do so. I'm I'm now yeah. going through and trying to look for it for the record, um, because I do want to know. It is it is down. I was wrong. Oh, it is let's down. go. Five seconds or like six seconds on it whenever it goes down. So apologies to Jake. It wasn't it wasn't on him. Uh, he saved. He saved. That's fine. That's uh, that's how it is. And we can go on with the podcast yep. without stressing anymore because that's just how it is. Right. Game two was the Jingwei game where I was feeling really good. And then I got Wind Demon and then they had three Spectrals. <laughs> <And I was laughs> instantly. Like instantly. Yeah. Panda, Panda like sent out a, a literal pager notice to the whole team that you had like shuriken one and everyone was like bet and slammed the spectral armor button at that exact same time yep i literally pressed tab and i was like oh that makes sense for the pele to literally go after flat pin boots spectral yeah spectral. that makes total sense yeah like every jungler would do that that that's awesome yes and then a uh, game two is a throw on my part I wrote to it over to Portal, we got Portal, and then Final K jumped in, and I was like, what? Like, we can just kill this guy. We didn't kill the guy. And then no. at the same time, we, oh, we saw... Oh, yeah! Okay. Yeah, we saw Dan's in duo, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, this is a free fight, like, we can just take this, and then we lost. And I was like, what? 
Like, yeah, I was gonna what? ask. It was so that was your call game too in order to keep yeah. that, that chase going. Well, I, I didn't want to chase like up to their blue, but everyone else was committing that hard, so I was committing that hard. But I was like, this guy just jumped in front of us, and he has no rage. Like, this should be free. Yep. And then it wasn't free, and then we lost the game off of it. And I was like, I still feel like that shouldn't have gone that bad. Like, I only saw the Dan's and left when like Pyro died. Like, I don't know. I think like our target selection. I think uh, Haddock was like going on two other people, which I don't know if he should ever come back. But I don't even know if Vin was there. But yeah, I I thought that that was gonna be fine, but it worked. Or it, it just. It went really poorly, and I still don't know why. <laughs> it, went, it went really poorly. He, did, he didn't even ask Spectral at that point. So he didn't. I was like, he, I, we should be able to slam him, but I guess we couldn't. I guess we did, like, didn't have enough CC or something. Because he had beads and ult, and then he ended up transforming because he got like a triple knockup or something. Yep, he got a really big knockup. Oh. La- he almost killed Lazbra in between like all of you. And then Sam like came from some weird angle, killed Lazbra, yep. and then got to turn around and have like a four-man Pele ult. Uh, yep. And you're not winning fights where that happens. Oh, that was a game. Oh, that was the game where <laughs> Vin died in like tier two getting blinked on. Yes, dude. And oh, I, on the cast, you can go back and listen to it, Barra. I literally go, Barra, turn around! Like, I was so, like, yeah. I was so stressed because you were just clear in mid wave. I don't yeah. know if you didn't hear the blink or what. Uh, I don't know if I did. I'm at. I... <laughs> I thought Vin was fine. So yeah, I was just so did he. the mid wave chilling. <laughs> he gets like blinked on or something. I'm like, wow, they were really just like destroying Vin's mental this game. And then he ended up like dying to tower. So I, mean, I still got the assist for it, which is kind of weird because I was in speed yeah, buff. Yeah, you you left him pretty early. I'm surprised you got that that assist. You definitely yeah. could have just like turned around and he was in auto range because he started to come back towards you, mm-hmm. realized that you were there, and then just like went down through speed. Um, yeah. and, uh, and then like, yeah, I don't know. It was, uh, I was like, oh no, Barry didn't see him. Yep. Well, I was, I was confused as to even how Vin died. Cause I thought he was fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, just unlucky. You know, sometimes, you know, the disco gets jammed early and then, you know, and you're a disco from behind and then your fed hunter goes crit and they both three spectrals. So yeah. That's how unlucky. It goes. Um, what, a mental after game two because i can imagine you know game one very close you guys lose it on a coin flip fire sucks you know whatever game two you guys are close you guys misplay once and they end the game in 20 minutes like it is game two was way closer than the time showed in my opinion yeah yeah of course it was you literally lost one fight and then it was over after that that is not typical in uh in games like that um where was it did was it like mm, holy god what do we do i mean, we were like down a little bit but we had a lot of confidence because it wasn't like we were getting like stomped out by like the early aggression or anything mm-hmm. and i think we were playing the map relatively well i think we were reacting a little too much um i think we need to be a little bit more proactive uh a little bit but I mean, we weren't playing, like, bad or anything, so we still had a lot of confidence uh, going into the rest of the set. Um, and then game three, I went... <laughs> I played Jing again. Because, like, obviously, like, their whole strat, they just want to get Peek out of lead with Dan's and just have him smork uh, duo side. So you just play, like, the safest hunter you can to survive. And then it went Xe, and then it went DB. Yeah. As wh- my only crit item. Okay, I feel like that's the worst only crit item to go, Barra. What? What do you mean? No, shot. You're trolling. No, I'm not trolling. Okay, isn't it the worst to just go... If you're going one crit item, why are you investing the most gold into getting the... It's like the bait item. You're spending 3k on it. Because you can one-shot their squishies. You're trolling. Yeah, if you get really lucky... I shot PCAP for 600. How many times? Once. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. He died. (laughs) yeah but i feel like okay i feel like if you're only going one crit item isn't it better to like get rage and then and at least have some crit chance overall what no i have to stack rage yeah but it's so cheap but i have my two 
What's your crit chance with two and Deathbringer only? I'm not a math guy. I don't need that. Okay. I'll look it up, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Oh, you... Mid laners are so stupid, dude. You well, guys not... play off of numbers. Yes. I play off of feeling. Ah, that's much better. Okay, you get 20% from Jingwei mm. 2, and Deathbringer it's gives like you right? 25. Oh, so 25. you've got a 45% chance to crit on three autos. And you basically need to get a crit on those three autos. Mm -hmm. On one of those three autos, at the very least. And you did. Forgot. And it yeah, worked out. But yep. you are not favored in that instance. Did you go Diamond Arrow that game? No. Okay, so I you went, went 45%. I went Kins, Titans, and I don't know if I ever sold Boots. Okay. So, but if you're... But for the vast majority of the game... But, okay, but, Barra, wait. Okay, now I'm losing it a little bit. If you, if the goal is to is to get maximum DPS on the back line, you would just build Wind Demon Deathbringer anyways. Right? So if I go Wind Demon Deathbringer and they go three Spectrals and they already had three Spectrals on one crit item. I'm not right, going exactly. to more gold into crit. Right. Okay. So if that's the, if they are if you don't want to build more crit because mm -hmm. they have three Spectrals, isn't it kind of a waste of gold to go to sp to spend three thousand gold on an item that it's only good if you hit their backline? Well, I think it's really good for Fire Giant DPS. Okay, but isn't more crit just better than in that instance? I'm not contesting that Deathbringer isn't good. I just don't understand. If you're only going... I even think I get going just Wind Demon and no other crit items. I get that. Because you don't because you think that you can leverage the chins better than more crit. But I don't understand going Deathbringer is the only one because it's the most expensive for like the least crit chance. I don't... No, I don't value like the most expensive or whatever. I don't, I don't view that as like a valid argument, honestly. Because, like, if I get the big crits on, like, my 1-3 dash in, that's all I need. And if I'm going to be okay. DPSing frontline most of the time anyways that game, then I think, like, having one crit item for the potential of a one-shot backliner play, plus having Kin Titans for their frontline DPS because they're going triple spectral, um, is valid over going more crit and doing zero damage. Okay. I think that I'm just... I will say that I, getting the extra crit chance on Deathbringer is good mm -hmm. over just going Wind Demon. Also, I think... I don't view it, like, as a solo crit item if I have if I have Jingwei 2. Sure. Because I, I can load that up for, like, six shots if I really want to, like, min-max it. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You're starting to convince me, but I just, I'm not like, going to say, like, Wind Demon would have been, like bad or good there or like rage would have been bad or good there but in the moment i was like if i can get a big one shot death finger crit and turn a team fight that's worth the potential of a game winning play versus having to stack rage and wind demon feels really good sometimes and really bad other times so i just yeah. wanted to make the death finger play and i think i, mean, I guess rage and wind demon are the only other ones i would go for solo crit but um yeah if if I didn't have crit in my build, I would have gone. If I, I would have gone rage. If I was high, I probably would have gone wind demon. Um, just obviously like AOE, like you can get the proc very easily. Right. Um, but with Jing, I think the Deathbringer with the. Jing, I mean, oh, it's it's only because I have Jing way too. Okay. All right. I'll I'll accept that uh, that that's where it is. That's that's fine. But it ended up working out. So uh, you know, who who am I kidding? You got you got the big crit and killed him, right? Yeah, well, also, I mean, I don't know if, like, anyone's talked about but that server was dog. Yeah, like, I know, uh, I did, we, I did hear that that one wasn't great. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know if, I, I mean, not gonna, like, rage tweet about it, but, like, we were lagging, and, like, they did give us the opportunity to, uh, uh, do a remake, but we are, had already had, like, an established lead at that point, so, we didn't really, really want to do the remake, um, and we just ended up playing it out. And there were fights where, like, my ping would just, like, poof, just take off. There was one time I got Scylla rooted into a crush, and I could not Aegis. And I was very sad. That, I would, that does sound sad. Unfortunate. Definitely uh, hoping to be back in the studio sooner rather than later because yep. uh, that kind of stuff can be avoided. I mean, it's just very, like, unlucky. It's something really, like, on high res's end, in my opinion. Like, sometimes, like, those issues just happen. Right. Like, it's nothing, like... 
crazier series in my opinion. What um all right, so then game four, mm-hmm. you guys get the win, game three. Everyone talks about leaving the Giannis open. Do you think that, you know, you going back and doing it again? Are you making those same decisions in picks and bands? Uh yeah, I didn't view picks and bands as much of an issue. I mean they played it really well to where they would just initiate a fight, shoot the Jansel, and if the Jansel doesn't hit, they would like turn around. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you flip the coin enough, eventually you're going to hit that crucial Jansel, which we, they did and ended up winning the game off of it. Um, I mean, I I think it's fine to leave it open, but I also think we didn't really play the map well that game. I don't think we... Uh, I think Jake had a lot of random deaths that game. Um, and you can't really... I mean, He didn't really get behind, but I was like a K down because the Onher kept getting all the last hits on the rotations. Yep. So I was a little sad about that because, um, you know, the Kyron Onher matchup isn't that bad. But once he gets like all of his spikes way before I get all of my spikes, I'm kind of feeling sad. Yep. Um, but I mean, it's just unlucky that Jake got picked a few times um, or like we forced a few bad 3v3s in mid. Um, I think that game should have gone way better off of drafts and off of play. Um, I think we played a little too loose that last game, but I think our drafts and everything were fine. Um, but I mean, obviously, like, picks like Janice, like, picks like Dan's are going to look really good when we enable them and let them do what they want to do. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, obviously, like, you can do the whole argument of those picks have a high percentage of making those solid plays, you know, like, that whole spiel, but... We, we felt like we could have shut those picks down. Right. What, um, overall, you know, I, I saw everyone kind of tweeting from the team that sucks to lose, obviously you wanted to win, but mm-hmm. feel pretty happy about how the weekend went in general. Oh, yeah. Do you feel 100%. the same way? Um, I mean, beating Leviathans felt really good. Um, obviously, it would have been nice to take at least one more game off of Dragons, um, but I don't think we played well enough to do that. Um, then we made just a few crucial late game mistakes but overall like feeling very good yeah definitely think i mean we talked i don't remember if it was on the podcast or if it was not on the podcast i'm just gonna say it anyways you can get mad at me if you want but coming into this season uh you and i were talking about how you wanted uh you thought that with the way that smite has played right now and that kind of stuff that you wanted ven to you guys wanted to try and Mm -hmm. facilitate ven a little bit more make him more of a of a star player um, yep. and I think he, I mean, he is, in my opinion, I think he's better, he played better smite over the group stages and at playoffs than he did even when he won a world's MVP season four. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is probably the best smite Vens ever played in his career. Agreed. hundred percent. Um, he's very confident in us and when Vince confident in his teammates, he performs very well because he trusts his play and he trusts his teammates play. Yep. And last year, and on SSG, um, I think there was a bit of issues going on across the board. And when that happens, I think Vin plays a lot worse. But this year, um, we were just all very, very, very confident. And I think, like, I mean, Vin and Laz are just putting on a show. Yep, like, Laz was playing his best smite ever as well. Actually, just so disgusting. Yep. Okay, I'm just going to address it for chat. Um... They're picking Dan's because they're smorking duo. You look at Dan's the same way as you look at Artemis. Semi-immobile character, but very good at dueling, very good at diving towers, um, very good from ahead. But in my opinion, Dan's dies very easily in team fights if your dive is coordinated and can get on him easily. Yep. Um, so we felt like we could get on him easily in team fights or just disable him to where his lead wouldn't matter. Um, We went into that set basically knowing that I was going to be sitting under my tower the majority of the set Mm -hmm. because like Leviathans and Dragons, they just want to kill you in duo. So I did my best to not give them the advantage to let the Dans get a big lead. And then we just shut them down in teamfights and late game. I don't think Dans is a strong pick. I don't think Dans... Well, I think Dans is like a strong pick, but I don't think it's a strong pick for most teams because they don't play the same way running down duo as dragons and leviathans do Mm -hmm. um which is just like they just want to shoot the rocket at you and then dive you with two people like that's just what they want to do um for us we were not playing towards duo side we're kind of leaving me on an island which i agreed with and i thought it was the best way for us to play 
against those teams. And I said it would be fine if we left hands open, that I can deal with the dive, I can deal with the pressure, I can deal with losing my occasional purple buff, and it'll be fine. So yeah, that's my explanation. Fair enough. Um, did, uh, when going over like how you guys want to be playing and that kind of stuff, did Ven tell you to just be a tower boy? Is that, was that the, the call or what? Oh, I told my team I was going to be a tower boy. Okay. And then hopefully we would make Hurry a tower boy. Uh -huh. But unluckily we did not make Hurry a tower boy while I was the tower boy. Sitting comfortably, by the way, in my tower. For, yeah, you uh, looked 40. cozy. Yeah, I mean, I asked my chat afterwards if how often Merc was coming to gank me, and they said like five times All in game the time. one. So, All so the time. I was, I was pretty happy that I was literally just losing farm. I mean, in my opinion, like I think Sam's like wasting his time by ganking because we should be getting everything on solo site, and we should also be getting mid camps as well. Yep. Off of him spending that much time in duo, but I don't think we were utilizing that as much, and I think we were playing a bit wrong on the map overall. Um, sometimes. Because, like, we're, I'm 100% fine with being left on an island. 100%. Like, just sure. put me over there, put me in my tower, I'll be fine. Um, I did mess up one time in game one where I did get ganked. Um, I don't think you can ever... Dude, but I, I said it on cast, like, that was just at the point in the game where they do enough damage that diving your tower doesn't matter. Like, yeah. they, they can well, just kill you and no matter what you can do. I, I didn't see him in the lane, and I think I, like, let my guard on for a second there, but I thought I was hugging the purple wall. Maybe I wasn't. And maybe I you stepped, like, a it. little off of the purple wall, but, I mean, I have to, like, I should have just stayed on, literally stayed on the wall the entire time, but I think I stepped, like, a few feet off of the wall. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, like, Lash should be so far ahead because Sam Lou shouldn't be able to get farm, sure. like, on the map. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can't stop him from ganking, but you can punish him for ganking. And uh, yep. I think that's got to be the strategy for you guys there for sure. Um, all right. That'll, uh, we got to, we got to get our question of the week in here, of course. Um, oh yeah. I forgot we did that. <laughs> yeah, me too. But uh, I also wanted to say, I forgot to say at the top of the show, just wanted to wish uh, everyone a happy Father's Day. I know there's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, awesome dads in the Smite community. Have it, dude, Mike's dad has been going absolutely off on Twitter recently. He like tweets at us about everything we say on the cast, which I think is so awesome and so funny. Uh, me and Robin Ma, of course, best friends, and uh, and I'm apparently his son, which is really awesome. Trey Young just got ran over by uh, by a Sixers player, and I guess I'm okay with that. Um, so just wanted to say uh, Happy Father's Day to everyone out there, and uh, appreciate all that you do, of course. Um, and also before we get into this, I guess they haven't. Of course, it was Dwight Howard who ran him over. Um, just Manscaped hasn't said that they are officially <laughs> sponsoring the random question of the week. But you know, we'll get there. But Manscaped is officially sponsoring the random question of the week. Head on over to manscaped.com, pick yourself up a lawnmower 4.0. They are awesome. Use code BACK, B A C K, at checkout. Manscaped.com, use code BACK, 20% off and free shipping. Best way to support the podcast for sure. Um, Barry, you, I'm mm -hmm. sure you have been following along. I'm sure you're just as big of an Atlanta Hawks fan as I am, except no one oh, could be. But I love sports. Local team, you know, you're all about the sports. Have yep. you ever this was this is the most invested I think I've been in a playoff run for any team ever, except for the Pirates whenever they started going to the playoffs in, in those three seasons. Have you ever been invested in like a sports team run throughout your entire life? No, literally never. I've been very invested in esports my entire life. Okay. But what esports really run have were you like live you know, you couldn't wait to watch the games you were living and dying on on what uh on what was happening in those games i would say it was halo 2 slash 3 it was my first major esport that i got into i played halo a lot as a kid growing up and I, that was before i even knew esports existed like yep. i would watch like a few montages of like slayers boxer a starcraft pro like way back in the day and i was like that's the coolest thing and then i learned there was like mlg and halo and I remember like final bosses run. I don't know. I don't remember what year it was, but they went the entire tournament without dropping a game, mm. and just demolished everyone. I was like, instantly a final boss fan, which is probably kind of lame because like you root for the best team or whatever. Like you instantly like attach yourself to them or whatever. But I was a teenager and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, and since then, I watched a lot of Halo. Like between that period and i would say i watch i 
I always root for the NA uh, League of Legends teams. Yeah, how's and, that been going uh, for you? Yeah, really good. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm numb when they qualify for Worlds, and I just expect them to lose. Regardless of how the Dude, rest of the year went, I'm just numb. For two seconds, I know this isn't a League of Legends podcast, but I've been watching a lot more League as well. Cloud9 looked so good mm-hmm. at this last playoff event. They, they beat... Like damn one, and then they're mm-hmm. just choking against worse teams. I just don't get it, man. Like they could have done it. They could have really made a run, and then they just can't. See, that's the thing. You, they can't. They just can't. They literally can't. And I don't know why, but they just. I I can't. Dude, I, poor I'm Blabber. Watching him like mess up on Scuttle Crabs like every game. Like just oh, that mm-hmm. was. You feel for like a young kid who definitely like. I don't care, bro. I don't care what he says. There is no way that moment didn't get to him, and that's okay. Like, I don't think players should get judged for that as hard as they do. I think it's like yeah. a normal human thing, but boy, you could tell that moment really got to him. Mm-hmm. Poor guy, for sure. All right, that does it for the Backliners podcast. Again, thank you for Manscape for uh, for partnering with us. You'll hear us uh, pushing their stuff for uh for a while i'm sure but again best way to support the podcast thanks to them we also have merch so make sure you're picking that up if you please you're going to get some good looking backliners merch and uh and we'll see you next time here on the backliners oh wait wait, wait. got to give us a good uh rating forget how to podcast now um like and comment and subscribe if you're watching on youtube good rating on spotify and apple Podcasts or something i'm missing oh the other great shows on the prediction network they got stuff for a whole bunch of different esports that you can check out. So make sure you guys are supporting them there. And uh, and we'll see you next time here on the Backliners. Barry, I hope you aren't rusty and you know what to do. Bye. Oh, he's still got it, ladies. So That's clean, man. That so might clean. have been the best one of the phase. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, cut the mic. <laughs>